Hello, and welcome back to Jusson. Need to be careful. Usually, just getting too low tight for my old lighthouse is is an expedition for me. It's hard to believe that this time the adventure was just getting started. At the meeting point, I found myself waiting with Matt, a young woman from these parts. Well, yeah, young. Younger than me. Anyway, her parents have already left, but like other people our age, she wanted to stay. That made ripples with the older generation. Leaving the family nest is no easy thing. I don't know Matt well, but we already have something in common. The widening gap between us and our parents. She seemed relieved to see me. For once, I was lost for words, smiling awkwardly and still red from the exertion of getting there, with my pack all undone and my hair sticking up every which way, probably. Nice one, Bianca. Not social awkward at all. Uh, but I was just as relieved as she was to know I wouldn't be setting sail alone. To my surprise, old soul joined us too. I don't think we'd exchange a single word before now. Will an old schooner like him be able to keep up? Ever since I was little, Saul's always been the old hermit who lives up on high. He used to scare me. He would come down to the port sometimes like a spider sliding down a silk thread. The other kids and I would have, fu have fun running away, screaming at the sight of him. Even now, my knees started quaking as I saw him lumbering towards me. We set off as a group of three, since no one else came to join our crew. I soon realized I would be worried for nothing. A soul leads the way, an odd figure with nimble feet who climbs the cliffs with amazing ease. Matt falls behind, brimming with energy. <laughs> Suddenly I feel like the old one.
Pardon me, but I noticed I've stopped receiving my newspaper. Is there anything I should do? Could this be an oversight on your part? While I'm at it, I should mention that I really enjoyed your article on the Choco Show. As you know, there isn't enough water left for our postal relays to function, and too few pebbles available to deliver the paper in good conditions. Because of this, the voice of the ravine team has decided to cease publication. Although our desire to inform our readers is stronger than ever, we have not yet decided what form our daily paper will take in light of this new situation. Thanks for your feedback on the show. I've always enjoyed covering that event. Let's hope we'll get an opportunity to discuss it again one day. While there's no water, everything seems too fragile, doesn't it? I've never seen so many people coming down from the heights, and some are stopping in low tide. Maybe my situation is not so hopeless after all. The ocean provides for a patient heart, as my mother used to say. Maybe I'll finally manage to meet someone. <laughs> it's been slim pickings here. Apart from old Yom, maybe he makes my heart flip with his dimples, calloused hands and that plaid shirt he always wears. Yom? The baker? I hope you're joking, I can never tell when you're pulling my leg. Anyway, I'm leaving the tower too. Sorry, Basap, I don't know how else to tell you. I wish we could climb our carabiners together like we used to, before running around on the old pier. I wish I could convince you to come with me, but that's how it is. I'm growing up with the neighboring village. They found me a spot on one of their pebbles. We will see each other again somewhere down on the plane, won't we? Don't be angry with me. I'll miss your letters.
Chapter 3 Solstice We did it! I'm completely wrung out, but we made it in time to join the expedition. There weren't many of us there, barely a handful. Look how picky the poor thing is. She's shaking like a sewing machine. I, s I felt so far from home. But the tone was more encouraging than mocking. My efforts had been acknowledged and appreciated. I was too out of breath to reply, but a new emotion was up inside me. I was proud proud to have made it this far. Still doubled over from the exertion, I looked around at the others. Everyone there had left everything behind to be there. They had a fire in their eyes, a desire to change things. And I was a part of it. That's all it took to fill me with fresh energy. Arlo and Becca welcomed us to their son's court farm with open arms. They were emotional and the mood was solemn. They're the last farmers left in these bars and they're the ones who put together this expedition. They've spent their entire lives trying to f and failing to fight the drought. Nothing grows on the cliffs anymore. In our own funny sounding words, <clears throat> not so measly plant grows in these here fields no more. I hope I'm not reproducing the high field dialect too badly. Then, Becca told us about their wild scheme, setting off for the clouds to find water in the sky. At her words, a murmur rose up from the group. There was talk of how feasible the plan was, how best to go about it, which routes to take and which sections to avoid. Arla and Becca want to find ballasts 
As their cold flower down, enormous creatures made of water that are said to live in the clouds. Ballasts only exist in sleep stories for children. Well, that's what I always thought before embarking on this adventure. They're all Arlo and Becca's last hope, and I'm starting to believe in them too. We may have a chance to save the tower. It's up to uh, us to seize it. <laughs>